Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. So in a simple, it's in a very simple definition. Profiles is nothing but is a collection of your all the permissions what a user can have right it's a gateway you can think like that it's a main gateway which basically allows user to enter into the salesforce world okay now you can do tons of things on the profile but on a very high level i have written that you can go give the access to the objects uh, fill permissions tab settings there are but it's just a trailer right you, we will see on the profile we can do lot of things on the profiles but very first things right the profile based on that salesforce will basically you know figure it out what kind of behind the scenes salesforce will load the template for this particular user when that user is, is going to log in with salesforce right and uh, some profiles you will see or i mean standard profiles are there um, so and and means by default when you create the users you will see uh, sorry um, org you will see there are bunch of standard profiles are there but you can always go and create a, a, a custom profiles if you want to change something so first question is can i change the standard profiles whatever profiles are there can i go and edit and do some changes there so in the standard profiles whatever system admin and there are uh, standard users marketing users you will see there are 10 or 20 different profiles are there those standard profiles you cannot change any access on those profiles okay so if you want to use it as it is go and use it if you do not want to use it what you can do is we can clone the profile and create a new profile and that profile is called as a custom profile which we will see so apart from that right what are the main things with typically profile controls is one of course your is the page layout assignment we will talk about it what is page layout and all but just for starters page layout is nothing but the ui right uh, the interface on which you are seeing any whenever you are accessing any record right in salesforce whatever you are seeing it's all because of the page layout on that whatever the fields are defined what are the tabs are defined what are the related lists are defined those things which you are seeing there so that is the page layout so you can control that which profile will see what page layout and and these all are going more and more complex when you are doing uh, projects where you have multiple clouds are there so let's say account object is very common object across all or contact object right it is very common um, across multiple clouds right but um, there are multiple scenarios right some uh, for the sales users some account fields does not make sense for the marketing users and I do not want to expose also right similarly there are some fields which is only I need that marketing users will able to see not the sales users is able to see so those kind of situations will come we will talk about all those things uh, one by one but what I'm trying to say is when you are doing such projects their security is going to be more and more complex because this is an additional department or section is under another layer in on top of it whatever the uh, within that department there are multiple layers so those can i can control through uh, different profiles and and I, I can have a different page layout which we will talk about it field level security basically i can control that for a particular object let's say account object if i have 100 of fields so i can control which this all card permission right so um, uh, you will hear this terminology very often card permission so card means uh, here c for create u for update r for read and d for delete right that is what this card c u r d uh, so most most of the time people use this jargon word right so just you should know about it so this is all four types of permissions you can uh, i can control um, then the apps also which we will see how we will go create the apps and all uh, 
So right now I showed in the org, right? So by default here, this is the app launcher where you will see all the standard app applications right now there in this org. And if you see in this org also, I have sales, service, marketing, all the uh, different uh, applications are there right now, right? So this also I can control through, uh, this also I can control through the profile, right? Because I do not want that, uh, you know, the service guy will able to see this uh, application at the very first place, right? Why I will expose the cells? Uh, because it will confuse, creating confusion for them. So even in your, for an example, uh, one best example is your HR, HR uh, systems, right? Now HR, HR systems have hundreds of modules for uh, complex model pay, payout, pay roles, uh, leave management, multiple things are there. But you as an employee maybe have access to the certain modules. Let's say you are only able to apply your leaves there in HR system, right? HRA systems. But the HRA systems can have multiple modules. So how they are controlling it? They are they are just controlling it based on the, your profiles, your users, whatever you have in your company. So HRA department will just giving you the access so that you can see your pay slips, you can just see and apply the lips, you cannot do more than that. But let's say your manager has an access, another module to approve or reject the lips, right? The finance department has access to the HRA system to, to just upload all your, you know, the amounts based on your whatever your packages are. So that's how even the same things is happening in Salesforce. Right? So I can have uh, all the standard apps, I can create my custom applications also. Let's say which I am talking about HRA, payroll, leave management, whatsoever. We will create all those things. So there um, um, you can control which profile will have the access so that when I will go to that app launcher, right, I will only see the applications. I will not see hundred of applications which will create a confusion unnecessary. So if I will log in as a sales guy, I will only able to, I can control as an admin that you can only able to see the sales profile, the sales application only, not the other applications. Similarly, you can control the tabs. Of course, uh, uh, that is another uh, layer of the security and the visibility things. Unnecessary, uh, what is the use of exposing so many tabs and user will go and click unnecessary and then they are getting the, the, uh, the error that you do not have access or uh, this, this record is not exposed to you. So at the very first hand, let's let's close or, or let's hide the tab itself. Record type concept, we will talk about it. And then the other thing is the login. So login policy, uh, right now, uh, you can as an admin and, and I think even, I guess you guys have experienced it. Sometimes some orgs are, you know, only able you, in Salesforce also, you will only able to log in when you are connected to VPN, right? Now, if you are not connected to that VPN and then if you are trying to log in in Salesforce that you, you will get an error that you, even though your username and password is right, but you are not able to access it. The org. Why it is happening? Because of this. Behind the scene, as an admin, the IP restrictions has been imposed in the org, which I will show you how we'll do that. Now, once you impose the IP restrictions, what will happen is, no matter what you you know your password username whatever but you will only able to access the org within that network range within that ip range if you are if you are exiting or coming out of that ip range then you will not able to access this org so this is a very extra advanced level of of security from the login uh, um, uh, and that as an admin uh, that is also one of the important modules from your exam standpoint so you can you can uh, apply a bunch of uh, you know you first you can create at the org level bunch, bunch of login policies and then you can decide which profile you want to impose so uh, you, you may say that you know there are let's say my field service agents are there so take this example right that uh, as a company i'm also offering or uh, you know uh, the services doorstep to doorstep i'm let's say i'm the electronics uh, or a company so let's say for very simple example that Wi-Fi router right now when that agent goes there 
um, and based on that uh, in through their mobile devices they will check uh, all the details where they have to reach what are the parts is required and all and all but imagine if I will impose the IP restriction for that guy that uh, um, you know unless you are not within the company network uh, or the intranet or, or this particular day then you will not able to log in uh, that might be you can say that no this wherever you can you can just enable the VPN and log in yes answer is right but for these guys when, when, when I'm talking about the field service agents who are not very technical right they are more in skills in their work so they may always complain that hey I'm not able to access it. this app uh, uh, you know whenever I'm trying I'm getting this error because VPN also slows down the definitely the access and all so I in those situations uh, what I can do is for those profiles right I will not impose the login IP restrictions whereas for the other profiles I can impose it all I'm trying to say is that uh, at the org level you can enable it but at the profile level you can control that to whom you want to impose this login uh, IP restrictions also you can do the hours restrictions also so you can say that okay by 6 p.m. after that you know user can able to log in with this profile so you are basically mostly happening in, in let's say in the banking sector in the stock markets where there is a time restriction is very strict that if by 3 p.m. if market is closed close and if the banking transaction is closed close right it's not like us that okay let's work another hour right nobody is coming and stopping you but in some industry it's a very hard stop rule that by this hour you will not able to do that okay so you can put a login hour restrictions also that okay from this hour to this hour only uh, so because in the share market right there is a fixed time for opening the market and closing the market also you cannot come and start the stock transactions right uh, okay uh, I have one hour I reached the office one hour earlier let's start my job that's not going to happen in these types of industry correct so those types of industries if they are using Salesforce let's say I'm using financial clouds and other stocks and based on that I have to put some restrictions in my in my org uh, I can uh, do that through login uh, restrictions hours restrictions also so one very common question again you will see it in the admin is that uh, that uh, let's suppose they will say that uh, you know uh, okay I have imposed a restriction from 9 to 6 okay 6 p.m. now let's say a user first question they will ask you that if user is trying to log in at 5 58 p.m. what will happen will Salesforce will say that hey this just one minute left so I will anyways I will stop you because in one minute what you will do anyways so the, that will be your first option right or Salesforce will allow you to log in because it is still in the login time uh, range 558 is still within the range I have still two minutes left the answer is of course yes because it is the within the limit Salesforce will not stop you to log in but after 6 p.m. if you want to log in Salesforce will stop it anyway because it is out of uh, that lo login hour range but 558 Salesforce will allow you to log in. Now, the next question in this particular module is going to ask is, okay, Salesforce allowed me to log in. What will happen when clock move to 6 p.m.? Will Salesforce will forcefully log out and kick out, kick out, kick, kick out me from the org? Right, I'm doing something and uh, Salesforce automatically just log out and saying that hey this time is done you go home or since I have logged in Salesforce will not kick out forcefully which means I will continue working till the time I want and when I log out I know after that I will not able to log in right after 6 p.m. what Salesforce will do in this case now one thing remember right in both the both the situation there is a problem the problem is that 
all of a sudden Salesforce will kick out within a two minutes and I'm doing something and forcefully I'm going out. And secondly, if Salesforce is not doing that, then this is a security breach. I know that, okay, exactly before 5, 6 p.m. I will log in at 5.58 or 5.59. And after that, I Salesforce is not kicking out me, which means now I can do till the time whatever I, I want to do. In both that situation, the problem is there. So what the real thing is, what Salesforce is actually doing is, Salesforce will allow you to log in well and good because you are within the time. Salesforce will not forcefully, uh, you know, out you if you are doing the navigation. So let's say within the org you are clicking the tab, seeing the records, Salesforce will not forcefully log out. But moment you do any DML operation, which means moment you trying to edit any record and trying to hit save or something, then at that is the point where Salesforce will terminate your session. That is how Salesforce maintain the integrity, which means since you are out of the uh, permissible time and that permissible time you cannot or uh, do any transactions database transactions in Salesforce so you cannot able to create anything through the setup you cannot change anything in the record moment you are trying to do that at that point of time Salesforce will say sorry thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today